what's good y'all welcome back to another video a little bit of a different location sitting in the corner of the couch nice and comfy if you're new hi nice to meet you i'm felipe this is my beautiful wife bna go ahead and hit that subscribe button and everybody smash the like button you might tell by the title of this video that we are indeed depressed <laughs> at least i am i, mean, I also I am but i'm just not showing it as much as you are at the moment <laughs> <laughs> told you we're supposed to sell it. You can cry on command, so I suggest you do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so cry, <laughs> cry, cry. And then I'll... Cry. Today has just been like a low energy day for the both of us, regardless, but it has been a sucky feeling knowing that we're not going to Europe. Well, it's not 100% sure, but... It's like 98% sure. So... A while ago, the listing for people PCSing, which is permanent change of station in military words. I'm supposed to PCS at the end of the year in December. That will be my full three years here that I was supposed to be in Alaska. The list of where the possible next overseas stations came out on February 17th. It was pretty shit selections, honestly. A lot of them were not North Korea, South Korea. <laughs> Obviously not North Korea. A lot of them were Kunsan and Osan and South Korea. There was one to Diego Garcia. It's like a tiny, tiny little island in the middle of the whatever the fuck ocean. There was like one or two to Guam. And then there was a few here in Jay Bear. And then there were a few up in Isleson, which is the base a little bit farther north of Fairbanks. So you do not want to be at Fairbanks. Isleson is not the place to go. You always want to shoot for Jay Bear. Because that's where the city is, that's where the life is. In Isleson, you will get nothing but... Nothing. No nothing, honestly, <laughs> that's it. You'll just get nothing. You guys know Lynn, his wife, Dee, she just got out of the Air Force, but she was stationed there. And pretty much anything off base, you have to drive at least 30, 45 minutes to do anything. So that's how like isolated the base is. They have nothing over there. There are a few there, a few here, but that's not all what we were looking for. What we were hoping for was to go to either Italy, Germany, or the UK. The bases that came out for Italy, Germany, and the UK weren't exactly the ones we wanted either. I was hoping for Aviano, Italy. What came out was Livorno. It's an army base. I think it's called Camp Darby or something. It's not an entirely busy base, so I would have been fine with having like a slow base. The location was okay, but not the base I was hoping for. I wanted Aviano. For Germany, I was hoping for either Ramstein or Spangdalem, and Spangdalem was the one that came out. So. I was kind of happy with that one. As far as the UK goes, I was hoping for either Lakenheath, which is one of the popular, is the popular one, or Mildenhall, which is the far slower base. And I've heard is the far better base. It's like 10 minutes down the road from Lakenheath. Neither of those were on there. What we got was Welford. You guys can look up Welford Air Force Base, or not Air Force Base, RAF Welford. Nowhere near the main part of London, like Lakenheath and Mildenhall. So that would have been middle of nowhere, like countryside UK. It would have been weird and out of the way. So yeah, we were hoping to be based in any part of Europe, mostly so that we could travel. We thought it'd be very, very good for our channel, you know, to explore new places, explore new countries. That would have been a good opportunity to not only be in those countries, but to go outside of them and hit up, you know, France, Greece, Spain, anything in that area. Anything Europe, we were hoping to just go all over the place and have a good time. But unfortunately, that list came out February 17th. My dream sheet, if you're not in the military, is basically a list that you can make to line up with, you know, the listing saying, I would like to go here, here, and here. And being that I am technically overseas here in Alaska, I do have higher priority than people say stateside that would want to go overseas but i am below the people who are already overseas so like people that are already in korea people that are already you know in asia europe they get priority over me so i'm competing with a lot of people not only here but stateside and people overseas so hundreds of people and it's like a three month window my window for pcsing is from october to december and i'm the last one of all of them i'm literally my day is 29th of December, 2023. That's like the last day of the year, basically. So 
my chances were already not looking good. Not only that, there were very few slots. I'm pretty sure for Italy, it was like one slot. For Spang Dalem, it was two. And for the UK, it was one. And the report no later than dates, I'm pretty sure like two or three of those were before I was even supposed to PCS. One of them was in August, which that's just completely out of my cycle. Two of them were in October. There was another one in November and I think one in December. To begin with, it was a shit list, very limited availabilities, obviously. The timing with the report no later than dates was just completely out of the way for me. So I could already tell that it wasn't gonna look good. Fast forward to March 10th, which now was like 15 days ago. The website, my PERS, indicated that the assignments would be dropping from the 10th of March and on. But being that it's 15 days later, I haven't gotten an assignment. I'm starting to lose hope, honestly. I'm starting to just come to terms with the fact that our dreams are dead. Yeah, we got a little hopeful once we saw that there were at least some spots available in the places that we had on the dream sheet. But like you said, none of the bases were any of the bases that we were looking for. I did talk about this with Lennon and Womack last night. They told me to hold out because a lot of people have gotten like their orders to go overseas very late in the process. But honestly, I'm not sure that I'm willing to take that risk. I'd be willing to take that risk if I was like, say single. If I was single, I probably would have taken the first plane out to Korea just to travel and do whatever. I'd probably wait and see if, you know, I can test my luck. But being that I have a wife and being that, you know, I want to be more stable. Yeah, more stable. Yeah, more stable for our relationship, for our home life. And most importantly, financially, I don't think that I'm willing to risk waiting and then potentially not get an overseas assignment and then be forced to go back stateside in which we would be below the poverty line because unfortunately for me, military doesn't pay all that great. So what I've decided to do, say, fuck going overseas. I'm not gonna risk waiting. I'm not gonna risk going back stateside. I'm going to, <laughs> yeah. We really don't want to go back stateside. So I decided to try my luck at extending here in Alaska. Now there's two ways this could go. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. I'm just going to have to go through the process and see what I'm told. I can either extend my DROS, which is date eligible to return from overseas to match the end of my contract, which would be July of 2026, or I can ITCOT here, which is in place caught, I don't know what the rest stands for, but that would mean potentially adding years to my contract. Being that I still have another three years, or at this point, over three years of my contract, I don't think that would make me extend my contract, my Air Force contract by that much longer. So at the most, I'm probably looking at like a year extension, making me stay until 2027 and then me getting out around like 25 years old which I don't really have a problem with. If it means securing my financial future and our financial future, I don't care what I gotta do. I'm willing to stay here and secure the bag because honestly, I'm better off making the good money that I make here than any other place. Because thinking about it overseas, you're gonna have the exchange rates, which is probably gonna take more money out of my pocket than I would like. And y'all know I'm very stingy with my gold. Going back stateside, you're not going to get nearly as much BAH. You're not going to get any COLA, depending on where you live. I know that if you were to like get based in California, they'd give you COLA and good BAH because California is expensive as fuck. But for the most part, you get like no COLA. COLA is cost <laughs> of living allowance. That's just kind of extra money that they give you to, you know, keep up with the economy wherever you're living. Alaska is a relatively expensive place. Like, one of the first examples that was showed to me of how expensive this place is, it's not a huge difference, but it goes to show. In Florida, you have at Wendy's the four for four. Four items for four dollars. When I came up here, I decided to one day for lunch get Wendy's. I asked for the four for four, and the employee was like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, the four for four, it's on your menu. I order it all the time. And he's like, I've never heard of a four for four, but I do know what a four for six is. I'm like, what the hell is a four for six? Same thing, four things, but for $6. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm glad you refer your, your Wendy's situation. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just one of the few examples. <laughs> Alcohol costs more, food costs more, pretty much everything costs more up here. The car market is absolutely insane. The house market, absolutely insane. Like, 
everything is at a higher cost up here therefore i get cola currently we live on base as you guys know but if my paperwork to get extended here goes through then we're going to take our asses off base because i'm currently missing out on two thousand dollars worth of bah that i could possibly be pocketing some of that living on base they take all the bah so the rent for this house is technically eleven hundred dollars I've read that on the lease papers, but I don't know why they do this. They just take the, the full $2,000 of BH. I don't even get to see the other $800. It's ridiculous. I think it's a scam, but <laughs> being that, like I just said, the living situation out there in Anchorage and you know all the city parts is horrible and overly priced. I personally don't like apartments and all the apartments out there are shit. I would like my backyard, my driveway, my garage. At least in Anchorage. South Anchorage isn't all that bad, but that's also like the richer side. So it's definitely not anywhere cheap. That's why we settled on staying on base. You know, I have a relatively nice two-story house and we have fun. If we were to stay, I'd be willing to take my chances off base, not to an apartment. I would like to find a proper home. Maybe in the future, we could, you know, scrounge up some money and try to buy some real estate out here because that's probably a good idea for long term. I want to potentially sell my car to get another more suiting car because obviously the Malibu. <laughs> I have a Chevy Malibu for those that don't know. It's a beautiful car. I love it. I suggest it for anybody that's looking for a first car or for a car for your child. Get a Chevy Malibu, okay? Great on gas mileage, nice fun car. For any of you guys out there, if you choose the right package, you can make it look sporty. Anyways, it's not a great fit. It's a front wheel drive car. Obviously it snows out here. The roads get real messed up, slippery, slidey. I've had some terrible days out here. It's a fucking nightmare. And this past one just reminded me how much of a terrible car this is for this climate. So hopefully this time next year, I'm looking at getting something different with four wheel drive, all wheel drive, maybe a truck, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, we're we're looking to make a more permanent home. We just had such there. high hopes that we were going to Europe and just yeah. didn't see any reason to buy all this furniture if we were just gonna end up having to move later. We we're supposed to have a dining table by now, <laughs> but currently that space is just completely wide open. We've been here for like six months. We haven't finished furnishing the house, <laughs> but if we're able to stay, We'll finish furnishing the house, make it more homey. Our Christmas tree is still up, by the way. Oh, yeah. If you guys follow <laughs> either of us on TikTok, I'm sure you've seen our Christmas tree in the background. It's still there. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> it's very much there. But yeah, guys, our dreams are dead. I mean, we're still gonna, we still have plans to travel all over throughout Europe anyways, but at least living over there was gonna make it so much easier. Yeah. And just fun in general to be living in Europe. Yeah, it would have been nice to go to abroad and stuff like that. If I try to wait it out and I get to like May, June, July, I'm probably going to be too late on starting the paperwork to try and stay here and then I'm going to get rejected. And say I don't get the assignment overseas. Now I'm forced to go back stateside and be, like I said earlier, below the poverty line. They make no money stateside. It's horrible. It's criminal. I don't want to be stuck in that situation. I want a good financial future and just a good financial right now, present. Like, I like money. So I want to keep it. I'm going to send up my paperwork and try to route it as fast as possible, get it signed by my commander. That way we can stay here and we can start looking at some more long-term goals here in Alaska, long-term financial goals, long-term relationship goals, and find a comfortable place for you guys as well. So cry now. <laughs> Yeah, that's all we had to say. This wasn't any kind of vlog or, you know, any of the stuff we've been doing lately. We just wanted to let you know that our dreams are dead. At some point in the future, you guys will see us, you know, traveling overseas and traveling everywhere around the world. So we'll get there eventually, just not as soon as we would have liked. If y'all if y'all help us out, hit the like button, subscribe, yeah, and then we, we can go to Europe a lot sooner than than what we plan on and watch our videos all the way through please just yeah. just let it play if if it's that hard for you to just sit there and watch then just leave it on something and let it play <laughs>
Yeah, it's kind of like what I was saying about the subscriber thing the other day. Those of you that actually have the energy to hit subscribe and then come back later and unsubscribe, like, it makes you look weird. And for those of you that are, like, watching and then clicking through, speeding to the end, clicking out of the video, like, I don't know. If you can't handle this short of, like, a 10-15 minute commitment, what makes you think you're gonna have a commitment to a job or, like, anything real in life? Why don't you start small, right? Watch the video through, have some patience. I know what the problem is. These days, we're so consumed by the short form, you know, content, shorts, TikTok. That shit is fucking everything up. So I have advice for you. As much as the world loves TikTok, get off of TikTok because it's making I mean, your attention span small. As of right now, TikTok is actually looking at a little rough patch. They're actually like about to get banned. Oh yeah. Gone, so. I'm not gonna lie though. The CEO of TikTok, bro, I, I'm on your side, honestly. To be honest, I am, I am embarrassed by my congressmen and women. They treated the CEO of TikTok absolutely disgustingly, very unprofessionally. They kept cutting him off. They don't even let the man talk. I'm a military member. I'm supposed to have pride in my country. I'm supposed to have pride in my leaders. The fact that they treated the, the CEO of TikTok the way that they did, absolutely embarrassing. I have no words for you guys, except for get your shit together and let the man talk. And for the bits that he did talk, he absolutely crushed it. So good for you, Mr. Chow. Chew? <laughs> that might've been racist, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I put you, I'm pretty sure it's Chew. Even though we love TikTok, let's give it a chill pill. It's making your attention span small. Stay on YouTube, get used to longer form content. Like I'm sure you guys watch Netflix all day too. If you can watch Netflix, you can watch me and her. So watch the video, man, shit. But anyways, our dreams and hopes are dead. <laughs> Pain in my heart. We'll see you guys in the next one. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, please and thank you. <laughs> also hit the like button, please and thank you. Watch the video all the way through. If you did, thank you. Share us with your family and friends. Help us get to 500. We have a good, we, we got a good video coming up. So if, if y'all don't want to help us get to 500, we'll just do it ourselves. I came up with a great idea, a video which you guys will see. But anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>